So obviously today is uh, wash day, and uh, it's the first time we've washed this rig. Now I'm just using some good quality Meguiar's car wash soap for the first time. This thing was really dirty, so I, I do have the wash wax all system as well, but I just felt like there was too much dirt up there for that. I didn't really want to take the chance of scratching anything. So, and I know that stuff's supposed to be pretty good, but I just thought there was too much dirt on there. So again, I'm just using some Meguiar's car wash soap and a good quality microfiber pad on the end of this pole here. And we're pretty excited to see what this is gonna look like when it comes out. Um, like I said, it hasn't been washed since we bought it. So um, just taking my time here and uh, we're gonna make a day of it, I think. Little tip here that I learned, I don't know, a couple years ago probably, uh, when you're using a ladder up against your rig, one like this, I don't have an A-frame type ladder, so you know, mine just leans up against the rig. And what I learned was if you just put a towel on that top rung up there, then you can lean it up against your rig and you don't have to worry about scratching anything. So that's typically what I do uh, when I'm doing any kind of work on the rig out here with a ladder. Just a simple towel right at the top. And you know, when I'm washing it, it gets wet, but who cares, you know, dry it out later. And then that towel just sits on that um, ladder pretty much all the time, unless it's wet and I've got it out drying. All right, so here we are. It's three days later. Uh, still working on getting this thing washed and waxed and looking pretty on the outside. So it's taking me this long because I can really only do one side at a time. And by the time I get one side done uh, in the morning, I don't feel like doing it uh, in the afternoon. So anyway, it's just taking a while to do, but I did want to cover this wash wax all stuff just a little bit. This is not a product endorsement. Uh, this is the first time I've tried it, so I really don't know how it's gonna work long-term so far. I really, really like the wax. I like how it really brings out the shine in this rig. And as a matter of fact, it's a little bit too good because it really brings out all of the defects in this Grand Design paint job that we've got that we're gonna have to follow up with Grand Design on, get some of the stuff fixed, but it's, it's really good as a wax. So what I'm hoping is that now that I've got this wash wax all, all over the rig, because what I did was I actually washed the whole thing and now I'm just following behind that with the wash wax all to give it a good wax. So what I'm hoping for now going forward is that now that I've got this base coat of wax on there, that things just won't stick as much and that I can just use this waterless wash wax all system the majority of the time and not have to you know actually use the soap and water. But like I said before, time's gonna tell on that. This is the first time I've used it. So we'll just have to see how this works out going forward. But I'm gonna finish up this wall back here. As you can see in this close-up view, this is pretty bad right here. I just got some really bad water spots going on here. And so far, the Wash Wax All has taken this stuff off without a problem at all. And although this is kind of the worst area on the whole rig, as far as the water spots that were left behind when I washed it, I don't have any reason to believe it's not gonna take it off and that it's not gonna look just really nice when I'm done. And then what we're gonna do is up here on top of this slide. So what I've done up there is I just, I didn't wash that at all. And I'm just gonna use the wash wax all on that here in a little bit. So the rest of it, I washed with soap and water. That part up there is, just it has not been touched yet. So we're, I just want to see what that will look like with just using the wash wax all. But first let's get this wall done. Uh, I'm just about done with the whole rig. I got this whole wall here. I've got that part up there above that slide. And then I got to go around the whole top just to kind of, you know, do some touch up that I couldn't get on the ladder or with the pole that came with the wash wax all system. So I'm going to get this wall finished up here and then we'll go up there and see how it does above that slide where I didn't wash it at all yet. Uh, just like that, it's done. I really like that stick that allows you to get up high without having to get your ladder out and so forth. Now, I'll be honest with you, you will still have to get your ladder out using this wash wax all system. Even with that stick, there's just a lot of, especially on the campsite of 
most RVs. There's just a lot of stuff that you gotta get around and you really can't do that very effectively with the mop head on the end of that stick. So if you're looking for you know, a wax system that, where you don't have to get your ladder out anymore, good luck to you, keep looking. Uh, that really doesn't exist. Even with this wash wax all system, there's still some fairly intensive work that needs to go into that, getting up and down the ladders, hand waxing certain spots on the rig. You know, there's just no system that's gonna be easy unless you pay somebody else to do it. But then of course, that's gonna cost you money. So once again, it took out those really bad water spots. Like I said, this was the worst of it over here and it got it pretty much perfect. As perfect as it's gonna be for now until I get this paint job fixed on this RV from Grand Design. So next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna head up on top of that slide the part that I did not wash with just soap and water. And we're just gonna test this and see how the wash wax all does on all of that. There's not so much dirt up there that I'm worried about scratching the paint or anything like that. But I do wanna see how this wash wax all does just all by itself. So let's head up there and see what that uh, looks like when we're done. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and go ahead and hit the bell button. It's free to you and it really helps us out. All right, so I'm up here and I'm finishing up the waxing just around the top pieces that I couldn't reach uh, from the ground or really from the ladder very well. And I've got some water standing in my gutter here and I'll show you what that looks like and then I'll show you what the cause of it is. All right, so here we go. We've got, sorry about the noise too. They got the air conditioning running up here. But uh, you see the water in the gutter here, right? All along, all along. All right, and then here's the reason for it. Look at what these geniuses at the factory did. Effectively, they've caulk blocked my gutter. That's a huge thing of caulk right there. And it's preventing my gutters from draining. Genius. So I am super excited about this one, guys. I found this toolbox today at Lowe's. I think it was 269 and it fits perfectly inside of here. This lid that pops up and down, I was a little afraid that it wasn't gonna come up right and I wasn't gonna be able to open it far enough to really use that top part of it. But it uh, fits really nicely up between these aluminum cross beams up here. Those things are about 26 inches wide and I needed about 25 and a half inches, I think, to squeeze through there on this lid. So this works out perfectly. And as you can see right now, the pass is a bit of a mess. I've been uh, doing some stuff up in here, but I'm gonna get all this stuff out of these two totes and I'm gonna get them in this toolbox. I'm tired of screwing around with those totes. They worked out pretty well the past couple of years, but they're starting to get a little flimsy and I just need to get that stuff out of there and into somewhere that's more accessible because I use this stuff fairly often, often enough that I just wanna make it so that it's not a pain in the neck to be getting in and out of the rig all the time. So I'm gonna get this thing organized and loaded up. And man, I am so excited about this. So this bottom drawer doesn't quite open all the way. So I think I'm gonna stick stuff down there that I don't really use that often. Things like my propane leakage detector um, and just things like that that I really only use when I think I've got a problem. So that's all gonna go down in here just because that drawer doesn't really open all the way. So here's something interesting, funny. I needed a resistor for the refrigerator in our last rig, and um, I couldn't for the life of me figure out how to just buy one resistor or maybe just a few resistors from anywhere. So I had to buy this ginormous pack. There's two other packages like this in this box. <laughs> I think the whole thing was like five or six bucks. So whatever, it was worth the money at the time, but now I have this ginormous box of resistors that I'm probably never gonna use. 
I think the thing I like the most about this toolbox and these types of toolboxes is this one's actually got a power strip in it. So all this stuff that I have, all these battery charges, anything that needs to be plugged in, I'm just gonna put it right on the top shelf of this thing and get it out of the way. Not have to worry about, you know, unplugging and replugging things in because I'm out of outlet space. It's all just gonna be powered right from the toolbox. So that was one of the big features that I was looking for in one of these things, just so, Again, I, everything's just a little bit more organized. This whole thing that we're going through right now before we get underway again full time is just getting as organized as we possibly can. Now, I am no stranger to living in these things full time and traveling. I know it's gonna get disorganized because that's just how it works in life, uh, let alone uh, living in an RV. Uh, it gets a little magnified when you're in an RV, but this is just gonna help. I think just keep things more organized. I think living in these things and traveling all the time is a lot more enjoyable when everything's in its place and you're not having to worry about just crap everywhere all the time. Okay, I got everything out of those totes that I wanted to get out of those totes and reorganized into the toolbox. And I was afraid originally that I wasn't gonna have enough room in this thing to put everything that I wanted. But I was able to get my entire tool bag in here too. So that really works out well. Uh, I like that tool bag, but I really don't like having to dig around in it to find the tools that I want. It was a relatively well-designed tool bag and it was fairly organized, but still, you know, in, in those tool bags, it's just this big cavernous space for the most part. So most of my tools were just laying in the bottom somewhere and had a hard time finding them. So I was really happy with the way this turns out. Like I said, this lid, I was afraid wasn't gonna go up all the way, but it just fits in there perfectly. I couldn't be happier with the way this went in here and just the number of tools that I got. And the good thing is, is I'm not adding any extra weight up here besides the toolbox itself. I basically just shifted everything from the totes and my tool bag, and now it's in the toolbox itself. So what's gonna really be the tell on how successful this is, is after a long drive day, maybe, you know, in Michigan, cause that's where we're headed first. And I know that Michigan roads, at least the last time I was there was terrible. Those roads are probably the worst ones I've been on in the country, but you know, we'll see what this looks like when we've had a long travel day on those roads. So it does lock up so, you know, I can prevent the drawers and the lid from coming open when we're going down the road. I'm just afraid that inside of the toolbox, everything's just gonna be a big jumbled mess when I'm done. But you know what? It can't be any worse than all that stuff being in the tote in my tool bag. So either way, I'm gonna come out ahead on this one. All right, so full disclosure here, I've actually shot this piece once already, but things don't always work out uh, the way you think they're gonna work out when you're shooting these videos. And I had some problems with the audio and the video on this. So I'm just reshooting the first part of this. So bear with me here. I'm gonna do the best I can to kind of stitch all this together so that it flows eh, relatively smoothly. Let's put it that way. So what I'm talking about today is the septic hose storage tube that came on this RV. So this RV has the rear kitchen, which means the gray water tank for the kitchen is all the way in the back. And then the gray water tank for the bathroom is all the way in the front. And there are two separate dump connections. So that means whenever I'm hooked up to the septic system, I've got to run hoses from two different locations. So that really means that if I want this to be convenient, I need at least three hoses. I need one coming off the aft connection, I need one coming off the forward connection, and then I need a T to kind of bring those together into a third hose that goes into the septic ground connection. Now in Grand Design's wisdom here, they felt that it was gonna be okay to just give me one septic hose storage tube on this rig. Oh, and they put it in a stupid location where one side of it is only accessible from up underneath of the stairs going into the rig. And that just doesn't work for me because I need at least three hoses. And actually I'm gonna be traveling with four of them. So I had to upgrade and do a little modification here to make this work for me. So that's where we're going with this. I bought an additional septic hose storage tube and we're just gonna roll into it from there. So I hope this 
transitions neatly into what I already did before. Okay, so having said all of that, we're gonna get that one moved that's down there. We're gonna move it back towards the back of the rig up underneath of the kitchen. And then we're also gonna install this one as a second hose storage. And this is a Valterra adjustable hose tube. And that's the first thing I like about it is that it's adjustable. And then the second reason I like this is because it's got a different style cap on it. And I'll show you what that looks like here in just a minute. But those are the two reasons why I like this one. And it should be fairly easy to install. I'm gonna have to obviously take the old one off. And we're gonna go back to the back of the rig, do some measurements on where we need our new holes to be. And then we'll drill our holes through that frame piece and then just basically bolt this thing up into place and we'll have two of these things. They're gonna be side by side and they're gonna be super easy to access. All right, now I apologize for the brightness over here. I, I, I'll try and fix some of that in the editing, but uh, this is, I'm on the driver's side right now. This is where I'm gonna connect this. I'm only about maybe six feet from the tail end of the rig. I think this is the best spot for it on my rig. Now there may be more ideal spots underneath the here than where I'm at right now. But the problem is I have to come this far back because there is a propane line that basically runs almost the entire length of the rig um, that comes back to the kitchen to the stove. So I can't install it on top of that. So I'm kind of at that frame area right just right behind where that propane line stops. So this is where I'm going to put it. And I think it's actually going to work out pretty well. But in the end, I'm just happy that they're both going to be in the same spot and they're both going to be in a much more accessible spot. Oh. All right, so this first part's probably not entirely necessary, but I am going to drill a pilot hole in here just to get the self-tapping screws something to bite off right away. I'm just gonna mark a spot here with the drill. There we go. And then I'll drill those holes. So that's it, it's pretty easy, right? Um, that's one side. Obviously the other side's gonna be just the same process. So I'm not gonna record any more of this because setting up the camera takes me longer than it does to do any of this. So I think you get the idea. So we're gonna finish this one and then I'm gonna move the original one from the front of the RV. I'm gonna move it back here, put them side by side and then I'll just show you what that looks like when I'm all done. All right, so here we go. They're both installed. I'd like to say that that was a frustration free installation but it really wasn't uh, some of that was my fault some of it i just couldn't help but anyway they're both up here they're both in place and like i said before one of the reasons that i like this new storage tube is because of the way these caps come on and off they're twist on caps like this and they're kind of inset inside and the reason that i prefer that over the original tube is in here is because these are just held on with these little hinges over here on the side and i have broken probably three or four of these over the course of owning my rvs and mostly what happens is this little piece here breaks off either on the top or the bottom and then you have to rely on the locking mechanism to help keep that in place which i don't i don't really care for um, that could probably come off going down the road now i could put a little zip tie or something on here but you know, that's just an extra step I don't really wanna to have to take. So I'm gonna to have to order another one of these. This was actually broken before um, I was working on this today. I think I broke it on our last trip. Um, so I have to order another one of these. Fortunately, you can just order the caps on these things. So that's good. You can get the cap here uh, with the little door itself and you can just swap out the door. So, but anyway, that's why I like uh, this new tube even better. It looks like there's, it's just much more sturdy. There's less, small parts on here to break now if i could just figure out you know there we go how to get that thing shut um so anyway they're both up they're both installed this is a much better location for my hoses i don't know why they didn't put it back here in the first place it just makes much more sense where it was located up front it was just so hard to get to not only on the campsite where the stairs are but even on the other side it was just really difficult to get to so this just makes a lot more sense and it's going to work out a lot better for us So we told you that we would give you an update on our dishwasher, whether or not we liked it, loved it, hated it. 
So far, we're in the like, maybe almost love stage. We've got a couple of issues with it. One pretty minor one, hopefully, we're going to be able to figure out today. So the minor issue is we have pretty much found that we can't really put any silverware, at least any regular silverware here in this front left corner, or it interferes with the soap dispenser. The door just doesn't open all the way, which doesn't allow the soap to do its job. And then the dishes end up kind of slimy because that soap just comes out at the wrong time. The other issue, which is pretty major, and we've been dealing with it for probably a couple weeks now, is the drain line keeps kinking. Oh, kinky. <laughs> and Jeremy thought he had it figured out. We got it unkinked. We got it working again. We ran it through a full cycle and everything was fine. And then the next cycle, it kinked again. And so when it refuses, when it kinks, it doesn't drain, which sends it into an overflow error. So when the overflow error occurs, it literally somewhat overflows the dishwasher and it drips out. It gets all over this shelf that it's sitting on. It comes down and drips down the side. And as you can see, when we pull, pull this out in a little bit, it's actually damaged our laminate here. So we're going to have to do some sort of fix there. But Jeremy's going to pull this out, hopefully, for the final time today. And we're going to try to get this thing fixed so the hoses, the, actually the drain line doesn't kink anymore. All right, so step one in this fix is to get this hose. This is the drain hose. Jeremy is going to cut it so that it's a straight shot from the back of the dishwasher to the connection in the rig. So there will be no way for it to kink anywhere. So that's gonna be step one, and then we'll move on to step two. the original hole that I cut to get the both hoses and the power cord through. The problem with this drain hose is it's very easy to kink. So when it kind of loops up and bends around back there and then goes through that hole, it kinks up. So the idea is we're just going to take that hose, that drain hose that comes off the back of the dishwasher, and it's basically going to just go straight down now, but I have to widen that hole a little bit. I'm going to use my jigsaw here and just widen that hole some, and then we should have plenty of room for that hose to get through there. and. Uh, prevent any kind of kinking. We should be done now. So Jeremy cut the hose, cut the hole in the back so that drain line can just shoot straight down. Uh, he zip tied both of the lines to that back cross member so that they shouldn't move at all. So this is the drain line that we were messing with. So it's coming straight off of the back, straight down and curving. If this thing kinks, toss it out the window. <laughs> All right, we're gonna put the dishes back in, run it through a cycle, and we'll give you an update and let you know if we get another error code and overflow. All right, so that's why we have the water leak detectors. We just got done putting this thing back together and we're running a load through it. And the drain line is leaking right where I was working on it. It's actually leaking from the RV side of that plumbing line. So meaning that's the plumbing that came supplied with the RV. It's that little clamp. I can't, I can't think of what they're called. Those little ring clamps that uh, looks like maybe has come loose or has failed or something, but that's the connection that's leaking here. But that's why we have the water leak detectors. We heard this, we were both outside um, doing stuff and we both heard that leak detector going off. 
uh, the water shut off automatically to the rig, uh, even though, you know, that's not really what was leaking. It wasn't the water source, it was the water drain. Uh, but at any rate, the water was shut off to the rig. We heard it outside and we pretty much both knew exactly what it was because we just got done working in here. So I'll get that pulled apart and uh, fix that here in just a little bit. So we have made it through almost at a full cycle. So this is just going through its drying cycle, but it has gone fully through the wash and the rinse cycle. We have not had any errors, nothing. So we are hopeful that we fixed the problem. So the issue seems to be that the hose is just way too soft for the hot water flowing through it. If there's any sort of curve in that hose, it just allows it to kink closed and shut off that water flow, which creates the overflow error. So honestly, the hose should really be a lot stiffer to prevent the kink. So what we did is we just shortened that hose, got rid of the kink, there's no curve anymore. And as of this cycle, we're good. Hopefully next cycle, we're also good. We are gonna give it a few more weeks and give you another update. But as of right now, we are really liking the convenience of having a dishwasher. It's nice not to have a day's worth of dishes sitting on my counter. Both Jeremy and I hate that. So we like being able to stick them in the dishwasher and for the most part, forget about them. All right, so now that we have no leaks, we have no error codes, I think we're finally good to go. But the one last thing that we wanted to show here is how we keep this thing in place and you know keep it from bouncing around when we're underway. And I think we mentioned it in one of our previous videos, I think when we first got this thing, but I think it was actually Candace's idea but there's about an inch and a half of space up here at, between the bottom of the countertop and the top of the dishwasher. And we just took a couple of pool noodles, or I think it was just one pool noodle. We sliced it in half lengthways. And then we just jammed these things up in that space and it makes it really tight. This dishwasher really doesn't move around at all once these pool noodles are in there. We've been underway twice now with uh, that method, I guess, of securing this dishwasher and it didn't move at all. So that's kind of the last step here. I'm just gonna take these pool noodles and I'm just gonna jam them back in there as far as I can get them, as many as I can get in there. And we should be good to go now with this thing. I don't foresee us having really any more problems, hopefully for a while now. And there we go, that's all there is to it. Those pool noodles will keep this thing nice and secure. You can see it's not moving around here at all. And like I said before, we uh, have had good luck already on two trips, so we should be good to go now. Um, and you know what, unless you're down here looking around for some reason, you'd never even know that those pool noodles were in there. So, works for us, you know, this isn't a how-to, this is how we do it. Um, so that's how we did it. All right, so we're about to wrap up our time here in Indiana. You guys know mm -hmm. we've been full time living here um, at my dad's place for about the past year. Yep. And we're about to wrap that up. We've got a little shindig going on here tonight with some family. They, I think they were just about in a coma after dinner. Yeah. But we yeah. broke out the pie and the cake and everything and mm -hmm. uh, everybody's kind of... Uh, Reviving with the sugar. Yeah, exactly. And as much as we're looking forward to getting on the road, it has been nice to have family, I think, right there that's sam it's been yep. nice having sam it's only been she's like two hours away yeah and that's been really nice been able to go down and visit her she's popped up several times uh, we've we missed that that's been really really nice this summer and of course the rest of the family as well we've got some cousins some aunts and uncles and all mm -hmm. that back there but a new baby on the way oh yeah we have a baby mama right there <laughs> say hi baby mama <laughs> but so uh, yeah but as fun as it's been uh while we've been here we're also really looking forward to get on the road mm -hmm. in one two three days yep two days in a wake up two days in, a in wake submarine up. terms two days yep. in wake up so we're gonna wrap this up for this week and the next time we see you guys we will be on the road on the road and what are we hitting first the michigan grand design rally so we will see you guys out on the road Peace out.
Peace out.